over the course of the last year, um, I've spoke a lot about the, the place of love within the Christian faith. And you've heard me argue how love is the premise, the basis of the Christian life, and how that love is our sort of guiding star. Um, but today I want to change the topic. I want to talk about one of the other cardinal virtues of the Christian faith, which is hope. And I'm particularly um, thinking of, of people at the moment who have given up hope. People who are struggling in their life. People who say perhaps have had uh, a hard time of it because of say family circumstances or because of betrayals by loved ones or being let down by the people that they care about, being stabbed in the back. And that, that wound to your soul has left you almost in a state of paralysis or in a state of handicap that you can't push forward in your life because all you can see is the despair of the moment, the issue that you're in. You can't see beyond your present and your present isn't so good. So what I want to talk about is, is the Christian message of hope and how hope within the human heart points towards a reality outside of the natural. It points towards a reality that is non-material because the human heart needs hope and the human mind needs hope for you to function. In the book of Job, it was said, is not your fear of God your confidence and the integrity of your ways your hope? And um, this is put into the, one of the opponents of the character of Job, who's talking about uh, Job who is at this moment talking about the grievances that have been inflicted upon him by God's command. And in isolated, this text has truth in it, and it sounds true, though in the book of Job, actually, in that wider context, it's false. But there are many people who lack hope and are making decisions because they fear something other than God. They fear perhaps the consequence of speaking out, or they fear the fact that people might discover a weakness within themselves, or they fear the fact that they might lose their reputation, or that people might view them in a certain way. The cure to all such fears is to fear God before anyone else. Because when you fear God alone and no one else, then you're not afraid of what others might think of you. You're not afraid of uh, the, the consequence of an action if you do it rightly. And he said that the integrity of your ways are your hope because good habits build good lives. And there are many people who, because they lack hope, because they lack self-discipline, their life is chaotic. It's broken, it's damaged. It lacks those rhythms that allow it to be positive and to be filled with light and health and goodness. So you need to build within your life an integrity of the way that you live. And I say this as someone who's a sinner, someone who sins and struggles with sin. But I know that in those ways in which I walk with integrity, I have hope. It says in Proverbs 4.23, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. The West encourages us to be distracted constantly with entertainment and with ways to take ourselves out of the pains that we feel. It doesn't encourage us to reflect inward. It doesn't encourage us to think upon ourselves and to consider the reality of the soul. And one of the cardinal sins that is spoken of is a slothfulness in the care of your own soul. That's the care of your emotional self. But the scriptures teach us that we are to watch over our heart 
That means to take a view of our emotional self and to consider it and to see how that emotional self is functioning or not functioning. How it is wounded or not wounded. How it is strong or not strong. And the reason for that is because out of the heart, the emotional self, flows the wellsprings of life. The narrative that controls your mind is the narrative that controls your life. And if your narrative that you tell yourself is one of despair, is one of misery, is one of pain, then these things will define you and define how you relate to the world around you. And so it is incumbent upon Christians to guard their heart, to guard their emotional self, to organize their inner man so that life may flow outwards. In Proverbs 23, 18, the scriptures say, surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. Hope is a reality. Whilst ever there is a tomorrow, there is a hope. Whilst ever there is a tomorrow, there is a hope. And so I say to you, those of you who are perhaps wallowing in self-pity, to those of you who are struggling with the circumstances of your life, that you should not give up, that you should not surrender to circumstance or the dying of the light, but that you should stand in defiance of those circumstances you face and to build a future because you hope for something better. And I want to be clear here because there is such a thing as a false hope. That is the idea that you will be able to achieve something that is simply beyond your means. But I am talking about a realistic hope that is grounded in reality. It says in Proverbs 24, 14, Know that wisdom is thus for your soul. If you find it, then there will be a future and your hope will not be cut off. It's talking about that you go into the future using wisdom, using thought, considering your circumstances, considering your life and deciding what wisely, what is prudent to invest your energy into what is prudent to invest your time into, what is prudent to invest your resources into. And if you act with wisdom, there will be a future. And that future will have hope. You can make your circumstances better. In 2918 Proverbs, it says, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained but happy is he who keeps the law. Where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained, means that if we have no focus in our lives, if we have no direction that we're moving towards, we scatter like sheep without a shepherd. We run to and fro, seeking after this stimulation or that stimulation, without any recourse to truth, without any direction to our lives. And I would say to you, to those of you that are struggling in your own personal life, what is your vision? What is your hope? What are you working towards? What is your goal? And how wisely have you decided that goal? We as Christians, must remember that we have a vision of the kingdom of God. As Christians, we have a vision of a church triumphant, a vision that we as Christians have lost sight of in the, the depths and the throes of the enlightenment and the fact that we as a community are on the back foot. But if we commit ourselves wisely and prudently to the triumph of the church, with a hope in that future of a triumphant church, we can turn this situation around, but we need to rally again. It says in Lamentations, this I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. 
The Lord's loving kindness indeed never ceases, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Our God is a God who is faithful to us, and every day is a new start. It does not matter how you failed yesterday, today is a new beginning. Today, all of God's promises for your life are fresh and new. And you need to walk in them, in confidence, in faith, with hope for the future that is laid before us. Because our vision is of our loving God and his kingdom. And it is that which refreshes our soul and restructures the inner man in terms of what we wisely commit our energies toward. In Romans 5.3 to 5.5 5, it states, And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance proven character, and proven character hope, and hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. As Christians, you may be struggling and as Christians, you may look around at the state of the church as it is in the West today and you may think to yourself, what is the point? We're defeated. We might as well just wait upon the Lord and hide in our churches. But that is not the Christian way. We must meet the challenges that we face with perseverance. Because we know that the tribulations that we are going through brings about that perseverance. And that perseverance is proving our character. It is through tribulations that you conform to the image of the Son of God. And in that conformity, through that conformity, you are made into an image bearer of the divine in the world around you, a true soldier of the living God, bringing about his kingdom here on earth. And it is through that work of the Holy Spirit given to us that we have this hope. And so I say to you, Christians, I say to you, those who are struggling, that we as Christians, should be a people of hope and in the face of our adversity whether those are personal to ourselves or whether they are adverse in terms of our community we should commit ourselves to that task as paul says in corinthians or is he speaking altogether for our sake yes for our sake it was written because the plowman ought to plow in hope and the thresher to thresh in hope of sharing the crops. The work that we do as Christians, we do in the hope of the salvation that we are given through Christ and as being part of that new creation, that we might share in the glory of God that is given to us by the Holy Spirit if we are a people of hope through the trials that we face. So I say to you Christians, and I say to you that are struggling, have hope, be strong, be men, carry the faith, press forward and surrender no ground to no one.